So ahead of the BOA rate decision tomorrow, I want to take some time to look at the state of the UK economy. I'm joined by the man tasked with the borrowing the UK government needs to do to manage that budget deficit. The gatekeeper, if you like, Robert Steeman, CEO of the UK Debt Management Office, joins me now. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. So can you talk to me about what you've been doing to boost demand or appetite for UK gilts? Well, we like to think that the gilt market is one which has, over the years, especially in the recent past, appealed to a much wider group of investors than it did, let's say, just 10 years ago. So we see a much broader diversification of investors across the globe as well. Also, international investors play a very important role. But the domestic pension fund investor base is very important for us too. We talk to them, we engage with them, mm. and we try and make sure that our issuance program is structured to their needs. Yeah, this is interesting because it's, it is mainly about the pension funds, isn't it? They make up two-thirds of your investor base, is that correct? Is well, this, it used to be. It and used to be the case, but the long-term trend is that overseas investors are coming in now. They are, and not just overseas investors, also domestic UK banks as well are much more involved in the market than they used to be. The, pension, the domestic pension fund industry that we have in the UK remains vital to us. It's very important. But it is on a slightly declining trend, and that probably reflects the overall increase in issuance that we've seen. Yeah, so tell me more about the reasons behind this turnaround. It's largely because the market has become that much bigger, because we've had to issue so much more. As a result, it's become more liquid. We've issued across a range of maturities. So 10 years ago, we were doing virtually everything in long maturities. And for us, long means 15 years out, all the way out to 50 years. We still focus very much yeah. on that segment of the market, but we're also issuing much more in shorts and mediums. But the average UK uh, maturity is, what, 14 years? Is it's it, just under 14 is years. Is that an advantage you have over other countries? We think it's a huge advantage, especially at a time of heightened tensions in sovereign debt markets. Uh, the fact that we have such a long average duration obviously minimizes for us refinancing risk and spreads it out. But historically, if you compare how much you're issuing now in debt compared to what you were issuing, what, 10 years ago, let's say even a few years ago, it's considerably higher, isn't it? It is. It's, it's considerably higher. In the current financial year, which has just started, at the time of the budget it was announced, we'd be issuing $169 billion. That's a significant figure compared to just 10 years ago. So, Robert, talk to me about how government austerity measures are impacting demand for gilts. Well, we think that the market has taken some comfort from the austerity measures that have been announced because they clearly point towards fiscal consolidation. And the market is focused very much on seeing that fiscal consolidation in many countries. I think it's acted as a reassurance here in the UK. So we've seen over the last year demand actually being very strong. We've seen our auction program go quite smoothly without any particular events uh, mm. along the way. We think the, the whole government's fiscal program has been very supportive of our issuance program. So in other words, from what you've been seeing, this is the sort of thing that investors wanted to see. Because if we had been having this conversation a few months ago, I'd be asking you about the risk of the UK losing its AAA rating and what that would do to the, the bond markets and, and to the government's financial credibility. But it seems as though this fear has completely disappeared. Well, I would just note that it was last year, indeed, that Standard & Poor's took the UK off negative watch. So clearly they drew quite a lot of comfort from the government's fiscal policies. And that really has supported us. It supported the issuance program. So from our perspective, and our role is just to make sure that we sell the debt as efficiently and as cost effectively as possible, mm. that's been good news. Do you think the environment going forward will be, uh, continue to be con conducive to that, uh, to that outlook? We do, because not least Sterling has actually shown that it is quite resilient in spite of what's happened over the last couple of years. The market, the gilt market itself, as I say, has demonstrated what we think is important, which is the ability to adjust to different interest rate scenarios, monetary policy expectations, very smoothly, very efficiently. And that all helps us. Despite the fact that many people are saying could be a challenging year ahead. They said that last year as well. Unemployment, consumer spending, inflation. Indeed, and, and we, we wouldn't want to belittle the challenges. Uh, you correctly point out the size of the program now compared to where it was 10 years ago. This year, we're looking at issuing uh, the second largest amount that the UK has ever issued. So we're, we're not in any way complacent about that, but we still think that the market itself will prove very resilient. We're seeing a significant spike in borrowing costs for Portugal right now. There are fears of contagion. 
What if it spreads to Spain? How is this impacting UK gilts? Or has it been? Luckily, probably fair to say, not very much, or if at all, you know, we hear anecdotal evidence to the effect that guilds have become something of a safe haven uh, for uh, investment flows across Europe, which is Perhaps an interesting thing. Perhaps wouldn't have heard that a year ago. Possibly not. Uh, and I think, from our perspective, you know, that is clearly something which we, you know, which we watch closely. When there are tensions, I think funds will flow always mm. to the most liquid markets and one of the great reassurances for us is just how much more liquid the gilt market has become compared to where it was a few years ago. Do you fear, do you think that will continue to be the case even in the event of a default? A default in, in, in Europe? Yes, you're yes about. yeah, not um, for the UK but yes, elsewhere in Europe. Um, yes actually, I think that will be the case because if anything were such a situation to arise, if the sovereign debt crisis becomes very much more in focus for the market, I think what you're going to see is really a focus on the core government bond markets. And the UK now has indeed become very much a core government bond market. It's effectively a diversification trade for many international investors. But even when you speak about the core government bond market, I mean, surely the rescues of, of Greece and Ireland showed that even sovereigns are vulnerable. There must be a perception out there that even government bonds are not the risk-free, safe investments they perhaps once were. In the Eurozone, I would say that's possibly the case. From our perspective here in Europe, we would like to think that actually, um, and in the UK in particular, um, I would say that sterling government bonds, UK guilds, do represent the risk-free asset. But you are fairly confident that that appetite will be sustained throughout the year when there just seems to be such a desperation to issue bonds. Do you fear that investor appetite will dry up for UK gilts at some point? I mean, everyone is desperate to get out there and, and raise money. That's true. Uh, we don't really, as the sovereign issuer in our own market, face much in the way of competing competition. That clearly is an advantage that we have, which other Eurozone governments don't have. Uh, the DOM is selling more inflation-linked bonds this year than last year. Why is that the case? Two reasons. One is mainly the fact that that's where we believe a large part of the demand is. We spoke about pension funds. The UK pension fund industry has real demand for inflation-linked bonds. Secondly, also critically for us, we think it's cost-effective to do so, especially at the longer end. I guess inflation is also a big concern. It seems to be a concern for many investors, uh, so clearly seeking inflation protection is something that they want to do. But we think it'll, it'll support our market as well. Robert Seatman, CEO of the UK Debt Management Office, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for taking the time to come in.